Greetings, viewer of the Pioneer. How are you doing? I hope you're healthy and well. We have left behind another very active day in terms of the Russia-Ukraine war. In a moment, we will examine the latest developments on the front line together with a map. According to the latest reports, the fierce struggle between the Russian army and the Ukrainian army has become quite furious. One-on-one -on -one conduct, especially on the Donetsk front line, continues quite violently. Ukrainian troops have frustrated the expectations of the Russian troops. What were the expectations of the Russian troops? To completely destroy the defense mechanisms of the Ukrainian army in the region with meat attacks. But the defense units of the Ukrainian armed forces did not allow this. Moreover, they inflicted heavy blows on the Russian troops carrying out the meat attacks and inflicted heavy losses on the Russian army. Do you remember the expression for the Donetsk front line? Tank graveyard. Yes, it is. The Russian army is still struggling with heavy tank losses and armored vehicles losses on the front line. So, what is the latest situation on the front line? Let's take a look at the developments together. As the Pioneer team, we continue to bring you developments regarding the Russia-Ukraine war. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss our daily map reports and reports on the agenda. You can also support me and my hardworking team by using the super thanks button below the video. Thank you in advance for all your supports. Let's start if you are ready, the Pioneer reports. Today, the Kherson front line was much calmer than in the past days. We can only state the following. Counterattacks and artillery attacks continued throughout the day in the areas mentioned in our previous reports, namely in the directions of Krynki, Antonivka and Pachinivka. Since the, there are no new developments that we can share here, we are keeping the section on the Kherson front line a little short today. Let's move on to the Zaprigia front line. First, let's see the Zaprigia front line from a wide angle on the map. According to the latest reports, the Russian armed forces continued their attacks in the areas mentioned in our previous reports, namely in the directions of Robotny and Verbov. In the direction of Robotny, we can say that especially Russian troops are attacking the west of the village. We think that the clashes here may turn into trench warfare in the coming days, because the border line here is largely settled. Russian armed forces troops cannot advance. On the other hand, the Ukrainian armed forces are putting up a very strong resistance. We don't think that there will be much change in this region until the scenario in which the Ukrainian armed forces launch a new counteroffensive is released. This is not limited to the Robotny line. In other words, a similar situation will probably occur at the points such as Verbov, Novoprokopivka, Novofedorinivka. Likewise, when we look at the latest reports, we see that the units of the Russian armed forces have attacked these areas, but they have not achieved any results. Therefore, the situation on the Zaprigia front line is quite stable. Let's talk about artillery activity in the region. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Robotny, Malayatok Makcha, Arekhiv and Putiahatke in the Robotny sector of the Zaprigia front line. In turn, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted positions of the Russian armed forces in Ichenko, Solotkambalka, Kopani and Nestrianka. In recent days, the fighting on the front line has been strong at the infantry level. Tanks and artillery units are a bit more inactive these days. As we will discuss in our reports on the agenda, the firepower of both sides are largely concentrated on the strategic targets. Therefore, infantry on both sides were generally active on the Donetsk front line today. Now let's look at the latest developments on the Donetsk front line. According to the latest reports, the pressure of the Russian armed forces continues on the Donetsk front line. You can see the region on the map. There is a big build-up in the region. This build-up is an important part of the Russian army. However, despite this, the desired success has not been achieved. The defense war waged by the Ukrainian armed forces on this front line really deserves to be appreciated. According to the latest reports, units of the Russian armed forces continue to attack Novomikhailivka from the south and southeast. Here too, there is a strong offensive of the Ukrainian army, especially in the region. We can say that the attacks have caused great difficulties because, according to local sources, the Ukrainian armed forces have prepared a large number of traps in this region. Russian troops are suffering heavy losses due to the traps here. So far, there is no report that the Russian troops have made new gains in this region. 
The offensive of the Russian armed forces continued near Nivolsky towards Tunikoi on the southeastern and the northeastern outskirts of Avdiivka, in Stepnui and near Berdyachi. Here, too, Ukrainian troops fought a strong defensive battle and managed to stop the Russian offensive. The demarcation line between the armies remains largely stable. Let's continue with the artillery activity in the area. According to the latest reports, Russian army targeted Avdiivka, Severny, Lotsyochny, Berdyachky, Novobakhmutovka, and Pervovskoye. In turn, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted units of the Russian armed forces stations in Kortobalka, Opitny, Pitsky, Uryatny, and Kaminka. Now let's continue with the analyzing the latest developments on the Bakhmut front line. According to the latest reports, the Russian armed forces have carried out largely the same attacks as in the past weeks. The southern flank of the Bakhmut is particularly important here. The Russian armed troops were likely very disturbed by the loss of Klishchivka and Andreevka. Therefore, these two points are the priority targets of the Russian army. However, Ukrainian troops here seize the advantage by taking the dominant hills, which are very difficult to take. Although Russian troops are currently attacking to take these hills, they have still not achieved any success. On the other hand, units of the Russian armed forces continued their attempts to advance around Horomov and Bogdanivka. We have already mentioned that the Ukrainian troops have retreated for tactical defense, especially in the direction of Bogdanivka. Due to this strategy of the Ukrainian army, the Russian troops have still not made any new gains and progress in this region. Let us continue with the artillery activity in the area. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Ukrainian positions in the directions of Ivanivsky, Chesivyar, Kalinivka, and Horlivka. On the other hand, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Horomov, Yahidny, Borkhivka, Bakhmut city center, and Ivanhard. Let's continue with the Luhansk front line. According to the latest reports on the Luhansk front line, counterfighting continues in the Sherbianki forest at South and Dibrova. We observed that the Russian armed forces are forcing the troops of the Ukrainian armed forces in Petropavlovka. Ukrainian troops have launched a counterattack near Sinkovka. However, nothing has changed on the Luhansk front line. What do you think? Do you think the Zaprizhia front line will return to trench warfare? What do you think about the situation of the Ukrainian troops on the Donetsk front line? How do you think the situation will take shape on the Bakhmut front line? Let me know in the comments. I read and care about all your comments.